and what's been the scalable or workable uh, system and what's been the most privileged aspect of it and what's been the most challenging aspect. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Our next guest is Grace Nolan, Samsung's VP of Integrated Marketing for their home entertainment division. Grace oversees consumer, retail, and trade marketing across the television, audio, and consumer IT businesses. She leads the way in cultivating foundational partnerships for the US TV business with Xbox, Netflix, and ESPN, and instilled a brand mission to lead through service to gamers, streamers, and sports fans in pursuit of their passions. And according to our back to school study, 75% of Gen Z responders are saying that they influence their parents' purchasing habits and particularly in tech. Grace, I'm hoping you can share a little bit more about that. I would like to. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Grace. How are you? By the way, on I'm the great. How are you all? Good. On the record, I know our survey says 75%. I'm, I, Gary Vaynerchuk, believe it's 100%. It is fascinating to watch uh, kids' voices in homes compared to 30, 40 years ago. Grace, great to have you. I hope you and your family are well. Um, there was something when I was, uh, the, you know, the team does an incredible job for me prepping for these, but I'm 100% improv. But out of respect, because I'm like, man, they put in so much work. I, I, I started feeling, you know, I took this vacation and I'm like, how can I be better? I'm like, I feel a little guilt that the team puts in so much work, hours and hours for these things. And then I come on and just wing it. And so I decided to glance, I've gone from nothing to a glance. And in that glance, I saw (laughs) that that Samsung's talking a lot about adding boundaries, families adding boundaries, uh, add boundaries during this time, transforming their homes. I thought that was super fascinating and was dying. Couldn't wait to get to you and hear what that meant and what you're seeing. So let's start there. Okay, so first of all, I think it's awesome that you don't listen to your team and you go off (laughs) on the rails because I'm the same way and it's amazing. It's very liberating. So So I'm with you. Thank Um, you. And by the way, on the record, that that has nothing to do with my team. That is my own personal shortcomings. I think it's your strength, (laughs) but my shortcomings. So my teams, and I'm sure your teams are legit, but go ahead, fire away. 100% no. My team is all smarter than me, but you know, whatever. Anyway, (laughs) um... So let's talk about boundaries. Um, it's really like COVID has like brought so many insights to our team. You don't realize in a typical day how many rooms and environments that you go through, right? So like imagine you wake up in your room, you travel through your house to get out the door, you like go to the gym and then you go, you know, grab a coffee and you go to work or your kids go to school and that night you might go to dinner at a restaurant. And Basically, COVID happened, and all those rooms and environments went away. Every single one of them, right? Like, no more movie theaters, no more anything. And then you were home in the same house with your family 24 hours a day. And people really started, I mean, we are, we're, as animals, humans adapt. And we started pivoting and really leaning towards technology. And our screens had a huge role in that. So they started looking to us for entertainment, for learning, for fitness, for all of those things to take the place of movie theaters and your office and your classroom. Um, And it was really cool because I feel like when you talk about technology, you know, people get so tied up in features and that's not why we exist, right? Like this to us was not like a, just a business opportunity, but it was a call to service, like a reminder of our purpose to create technology to help people and we we like we we came to pass man like we had like probably the coolest thing that we launched um was the outdoor tv which wasn't supposed to launch for months later and we were like people are canceling their vacation they're no longer getting on planes and going to spain or going to you know like they're not even going to the shore because who knows what <laughs> the airbnb situation is going to be right right so how do we create that experience in your backyard how do you start entertaining people in open spaces? And we ele- like we esca- escalated and it advanced the launch of this product so that we could create an additional room in your space. Um, but we did that with the, the content in our TVs. With, we did that with new TVs coming out with our lifestyle brand. I mean, it's, been a, it's, been, it's just been a tremendously challenging time, but very cool, right? Like, 
This is why we exist. Totally understand. Um, I'm just gonna get to the thing that's super on my mind. What was that thing that Ryan Reynolds did with the ah! like, Can you help me here? Like, I don't have all the context, but it was like, like seemed super interesting and he's always super clever. So just to educate the audience on what happened and, and me myself on that matter. Yeah, no, it was cool. That was probably one of our more fun projects. Um, what, a, what a talented guy. So we were working with Netflix last year. We have a ton of really great partners and we were sponsoring, um, a, a, you know, a, the launch of their new movie, Six Underground, which featured Ryan Reynolds. And we were thinking as a team, we've been working with Adam and Eve, our creative agency, and we were brainstorming, like, what can we do with Ryan that, you know, you know, could elevate our, our you know, interactions with, with this younger audience. And honestly, he's like as A-list as a guest, right? Like, I can't afford him. So <laughs> we're like, what if we did something with Aviation Gin? We brought him on. We pitched an idea. He didn't respond. We're like, it's dead. <laughs> and then he came back all of a sudden and was like, oh, this is kind of funny, but why don't we change it to do this? And honestly, it was the fastest I think we've ever moved. And we move at the speed of technology. Like, we're fast. Everything we do is fast. Um, but we turned around everything probably within a week. So finalizing scripts, getting all the approvals, all the way. It's like with a gin company. So this had to go like all the way up to our CEO and, and our risk people and everybody. And we had to produce it, shoot it, and ship it out. And it was just awesome. And what a fun team. Um, so, yeah, we got it out. We got over a million, um, you know, interactions, likes, comments on Twitter within probably a day. Wow. So, just a lot of yeah, people. it was very cool. Talk, let's go yeah, back to the back cool. to school theme. Theme. What a where where is Samsung seeing its kind of intersection with education, like purchasing trends? Um, you know, what what are you seeing? Like, what what kind of insights can you give us in the audience? Yeah. So here's the thing: COVID hit, and when situations like a global pandemic, you know, because we've all been through like seven or eight of them. Um, when they happen, people just start holding on to their wallets, right? They get nervous. And we were completely setting ourselves up for, for some slowness, for some, you know, softness within our business. And all of a sudden, we started seeing the category grow. And it was growing and growing faster. And then it's honestly, to date, it's been growing in the pretty impressive double digits for a flat category. It was a surprise. But the reason was because, again, the boundaries, the rooms, you know, people were, were having their kids from college come back and they needed another screen for the second bedroom or the third bedroom. They needed a new screen because they were trying to learn from their virtual classroom. And teachers don't present off of PowerPoint, right? Like, it's not like they have a beautiful, like, 20-font screen <laughs> for the kids to look at on their, their, their mobile devices. You know, they're writing. And you cannot make out a thing. And so they're casting onto bigger screens. Students are casting onto bigger screens. And, 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 you know, parents who are trying to balance their own work with what their kids were doing were also buying an extra screen so that they could keep an eye out on what it is that their kid was watching while they were trying to work. So, I mean, it's, it's everybody's changed. Everything has changed. And everything that they're doing right now is to make things work. We all thought that this was going to be temporary. And now we're settling in for another round of it in the fall. Um, so what are the ways that, that, you know, technology brands and brands in general can help parents? That's the only, that's the only you know, consistent question that we're asking ourselves. What else can we do? Beyond hard hardware, you know, there are things that we can do with UI, right? So we have free content. We have content for kids. We have child protect, protected, um, you know, features so that, Sometimes you're using the TV as a babysitter and they're not sometimes, being set free. I mean, the iPad and, 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 the, and, the, and the television have become an incredible babysitter for many. Yeah, but how can you curate that experience with your TV to be not just Paw Patrol 24 hours a day, which well, is let's, what let's, my kids would do. Let's talk right? about that. <laughs> so, let's, let's, so let's talk about connected everything. I think something that you, you know, that Samsung has done extremely well is that, you know, internet of things, connectivity across the board, because that will allow you to curate better thoughts on that and kind of the advancements you've been making in that universe? 
Yeah. So uh, we've been doing this connected home thing for years. Yep. Um, I think what we're trying to do is take it way past incremental to completely change the role of the TV. So what we've been seeing in years past is like, okay, I can connect my watch to my phone. I can maybe connect that experience to my TV and connect, you know, some of the content that we're seeing, you know, within the screen so that it's a little bit easier to aggregate. We're kind of doing it all. So it's, it's all going to just blow up. The incremental little lines are going to go away and then it's, everything is going to be connected. So, you know, we talk about, you know, changing the role of TVs, right? So it's not just about finding a show to watch on Friday night. Now it's about saying what your preference is for how you're going to spend your Friday night. So maybe you're going to be working out. Maybe you're going to be meditating. Maybe you're going to be watching a movie or binging a series. And the TV, our universal guide, now offers all of that, right? So it offers various genres of content various levels of interactivity with the content. It's no longer just a one-way, you taking a show, absorbing the show, eating popcorn, and then turning it off and going, right? Now you can do things with the TV. And imagine you can do even more in the future. And that, that's really our vision. But, you know, one of the things that we do is to, to take that experience and elevate the, the ease with which you're consuming that content, right? So, you know, when you think about, going to the movies. It's not just the movie itself that's great or bad that makes you have a good or bad experience, right? So it's how good the movie is, how comfortable your seat was in the theater, you know, whether the sound and the quality of the the visual experience was good, getting to the theater, whether there was traffic, and the decision on which movie to pick before you got to the theater. Like all of those things impact the quality of your date night, right, at the end of that night. So Samsung is saying, like, forget all that stuff. Let's just make everything easier. Let's give you a kick-ass screen with an amazing audio setting. Let's give you an aggregator, a universal guide that says, okay, we know you like these things. Let me aggregate your content across the entire universe of content. So it's not just, it's like Netflix on steroids, right? So Netflix will take all their content and say, hey, you like this type of content, go watch this. Samsung TVs will take the content across OTT, broadcast the world of content, including our own free channels, and say, hey, go watch this tonight. And we're going to do it on a, a kick-ass screen. And we're going to take all the decision-making away, and we're going to just give you a great experience. So there's that piece of connectivity. Um, and then I think probably the other really interesting piece, and I Can think I, 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 I apologize. Sure it with, Grace, I apologize. Yeah. I, uh, I want to get this in and, and we're going to run out of time because this is by far the ah, most- Ah, sorry. No, no, sorry, nothing. I'm sorry. But I got to get this in because I think it's going to bring a ton of value and I think it's a really cool thing to talk about. You are a dynamo and I'm sure everybody's seeing it. I'm reading the comments. You've got a lot of things going on and you are going through all of this with three children at home. I think it'd just be fun back to like me trying to always find a fun potpourri of like different things that might bring value Talk about on a personal level, like, you know, how you're navigating this with three, what are the ages? Like what's been the dynamics? What's been the highlight? What's been the low light? And what's been the scalable or workable uh, system? And what's been the most privileged aspect of it? And what's been the most challenging aspect? So, okay. I'm so glad if you, you, if you don't are mind. giving me an excuse to talk about my kids. Good. I love my kids. Okay, good. I mean, everybody loves their kids. I, you know what? I, was, I wasn't sure if I wanted out, to go. I didn't, know, I didn't know if I wanted to go here, but I was like, you know what? This will help so many people. And I just was feeding off your energy. I'm like, fuck it. She's going to go there. Yeah, I'll, I'll go there. I mean, my kids are awesome. I, you know, we did this little promo and they were like, we're going to be famous. Like, oh, you're going to be so famous. <laughs> Very be <being> legit. <laughs> um, but so my kids, I have three kids there. I have two boys, seven and five. Um, my five-year-old just graduated from pre-K yesterday. So, woo. and then I have a two-year-old little girl. Um, and like, honestly, I think I'm a really grateful person in general. So I like COVID happened and we're like, oh my God, we got so lucky. And the reason we got so lucky is because we had just moved and we're like, oh, good thing we got into this house before COVID and I was traveling a ton for work and I was like, wow, I get to, I get to not miss all these really cool things happening in my kids' lives. 
And also, I have an amazing husband, right? Like Brian, Brian Dolan, kudos. <laughs> like, I'm lucky to have that infrastructure. And I'm lucky to have a support network with my family. Like, I know that those are all, th those are all points of privilege. Um, and, I, and I'm every day just grateful that we're all surviving together. But yeah, it, it's a balancing act, right? Like, my kids, they will come into meetings and be like, I don't like that. Like in a creative review with an agency, you'd be like, okay, that's enough, guys. <laughs> like, that's really cute. Go away. And we're making it work. But and we're doing it the same way everyone is doing it. And he, there's, and nothing, he, there's nothing special. It's just we're grateful to have those moments. What's been the funniest thing? The funniest thing? Mm -hmm. Like, did the, the, like, the five-year-old uh, like, poop on you while you were on a Zoom with executives? Like, literally the funniest thing. What is the funniest thing? Oh, there's a couple things. Um, there have been meetings that have been um, walked in on pantless. And mm -hmm. with little kid, pantless also oftentimes mean underwearless. That's right. But there were a couple of those occasions. <laughs> um, really, really loud uh, fighting in the background or funny jokes, fart jokes. Um, there was a comment about <laughs> dynamic flatulence in a meeting that was a total <laughs> joke. And you could hear, like, it was just, it's just, there's a lot of it. It's constant. It. It's fun, though. And it's it is cool fun. to work for a company where everybody's just kind of like, eh, you know, that's, yeah. that's just what's happening. It's cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your incredible energy, Grace. YouTube Watcher, what's up? It's Gary V. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.